Hi friends, I am going to talk about accounting fundamentals today. Let me start with some important technical terms. One among them is goods. What do you mean by goods? Any article purchased by the business for the purpose of resale is known as goods. Any article purchased by the business for the purpose of resale is known as goods. Let me put it on the board. Any article purchased by the business for the purpose of resale is known as goods. Let me take an example. I purchased furniture for the purpose of resale. So furniture is my goods. I purchased refrigerators for the purpose of resale. Refrigerators are my goods. So any article purchased by the business with the intention of resale, they are known as goods. Clear? Then let me talk about asset what is an asset any article purchased by the business not for resale but for business use is known as an asset any article Purchased by the business not for resale but for business use is known as an asset. For example, let me put it on the board. Any article purchased by the business not for resale. But for business use. So see the difference between these two. Here, goods means purchased for the purpose of resale. Whereas an assets not for resale, but for business use. So that is the difference between goods and assets. Goods are purchased for the purpose of resale. Assets purchased not for resale but for business use. So this is the difference between goods and assets. Let me explain further about further on no goods sorry assets assets are three categories three types one fixed assets two current assets three intangible assets assets of three categories fixed assets current assets intangible assets let me talk about fixed assets any asset purchased by the business for 
the long term purpose and expected not to be converted into cash in less than one year is known as fixed asset. An asset which is purchased by the business for long term and expected not to be converted into the cash in less than one year is known as fixed asset. Let me put into simple points. Purchased for long term and he expected not to be converted into cash in less than one year. This is called fixed asset. What is current asset? Any asset which can be converted into cash in less than one year is known as current asset. The asset which can be converted into cash in less than one year is known as current asset. So, can be converted into cash in less than one year is known as current asset. What is intangible asset? The asset which does not have any physical existence. What do you mean by physical existence? You cannot feel you cannot touch that asset. Those assets are called intangible assets. Let me repeat again. The asset which does not have any physical existence, which we cannot feel and touch, are known as intangible assets. Asset does not have any physical existence. is known as intangible asset. Let me go with examples. Fixed asset examples furniture plant and machinery etc. Current asset, cash on hand, cash at bank, debtors, etc. Intangible example, intangible asset example, goodwill. Trademarks, copyrights, these are the examples. Clear? Let me talk about capital. What is capital? Any cash, goods or assets brought into the business by the proprietor for the commencement of the business is known as capital. Let me repeat again. Any cash, goods or assets brought into the business 
by the proprietor for the commencement of the business is known as capital. For example, this is the business. Proprietor brought in cash ten thousand dollars, goods five thousand dollars, assets worth fifteen thousand dollars. He brought into the business for the commencement of the business. So what is the capital here? 30,000 dollars will be your capital. What is your capital? 30,000 dollars will be your capital. So let me repeat again. Any cash, goods or assets brought into the business by the proprietor for the purpose of commencement of the business is known as capital. So here he brought in $10,000 cash, $5,000 goods and $15,000 assets. So in total $30,000 he brought into the business for commencement of the business. So hence $30,000 will be considered as capital. Clear? What do you mean by drawings? Drawings. Any cash, goods, or assets used by the proprietor for his personal use from the business is known as drawings. Any cash, goods or assets used by the proprietor from the business for his personal use is known as drawings. For example, What proprietor did, he used $1,000 of cash from the business, he took out and used it for his personal purpose. What he did? He took out $1,000 from the business for his personal purpose. So this $1,000 will be considered as drawings because he is using this thousand dollars from the business for his personal use. Hence, thousand dollars will be considered as drawings. Clear? Next concept is on debtors. Who is a debtor? The person who is liable to pay certain amount to our business is known as debtor. The person who is liable to pay certain amount to our business is known as debtor. Let me give you an example. Let us say Business sold goods to X. Business sold goods to X for thousand dollars on credit basis. So that means goods goes out. What comes in? Nothing. Because they are sold on credit basis. So X has to pay thousand dollars to business because he took these goods on credit basis. 
So this guy has to pay thousand dollars to the business. So what definition says? The person who is liable to pay certain amount to our business is known as debtor. Here X is liable to pay thousand dollars to this business. So X will be considered as a debtor. A debtor is also called as a customer. A debtor is also called as customer. Next point is on creditor. Who is creditor? The person to whom the business is liable to pay certain amount is known as creditor. Let me repeat again. The person to whom the business is liable to pay is known as creditor. Let me an example, give you an example. Let us say business purchased goods from Y. Business purchased goods from Y worth thousand dollars. Business purchased goods from Y worth thousand dollars on credit basis. That means business has to pay this amount to Y. Business has to pay this amount to Y. So what the definition says? The person to whom the business is liable to pay, that person will be considered as creditor. Here in this case, why business purchased goods from Y worth thousand dollars, and business is liable to pay this amount to Y. Hence, Y will be considered as creditor in the books of business. Clear? This is called creditor. Next on expenditure. This concept I already covered in my previous session. I am still explaining what is an expenditure. Any amount paid by the business for the services received is known as expenditure. Any amount paid by the business for the services received is known as an expenditure. Example Salaries. Why business will pay salaries to the employees? Because employees are providing services to the business Hence, business is making payment to them. So, business is receiving services for which it is making payment. Hence, salary will be considered as an expenditure. Clear? Next. Next topic is on income. What is an income? Any amount received by the business for the services provided is an income. Any amount received by the business for the services provided is an income. For example, business has a facility and it provided that facility to a tenant <coughs> who in turn paying rent to the business. So, business is receiving <coughs> rent from the tenant. So, rent received
from the tenant is income. So this is called an income. Next. <coughs> Loss. What do you mean by loss? The excess of expenditure over the revenue is known as loss. Let me repeat again. The excess of expenditure over the revenue is known as loss. For example, I have ten thousand dollars of revenue. But my expenditure is twelve thousand dollars. My expenditure is twelve thousand dollars. So here I have excess of expenditure over revenue. How much? Two thousand dollars. I have. Two thousand dollars of excess expenditure over my revenue. Hence, this two thousand dollars will be considered as loss. Clear? Then profit. What do you mean by profit? Excess of revenue over the expenditure is known as profit. Let me repeat. Excess of revenue over the expenditure is known as profit. Let us say I have revenue fifteen thousand dollars. And my expenditure is twelve thousand dollars. I have excess of revenue over my expenditure. How much? Three thousand dollars. This three thousand dollars will be considered as profit. Clear? Next topic is on transaction. What do you mean by transaction? <clears throat> A transaction is an exchange of money or money's worth between business and others. Let me repeat again. A transaction is an exchange of money or money's worth between business and others. Let me put it on the board. Exchange of money or money's worth. between business and others <clears throat> exchange of money or money swap between business and others is known as transaction let me tell you with an example this is business this business sold goods for cash what happened business sold goods on cash so when business sold goods on cash what comes in cash what goes out goods am i right 
Is it not an exchange? What business is doing here? Business is receiving cash and giving goods. So exchange is happening. That exchange is happening in money and money is worth. So as per definition, this will be called as a transaction. Because exchange is happening in money and money is worth between business and others. So this is a transaction. Let us take another example. Salaries paid to employees. Salaries paid to employees. When we pay salaries, when business pays salaries, what comes in? Services. Alright? What goes out? Cash. So exchange is happening here. Business is receiving services and paying cash. So money and money is worth. An exchange is happening between business and others. So this is also called as transaction. Clear? Now, in every transaction, in every transaction, you find two aspects. You know what are they? Receiving aspect, number two, giving aspect. In every transaction, you find two aspects. One, receiving aspect and second one is on giving aspect. Let me explain with the example. Business sold goods for cash. So what comes in? Cash. What goes out? Goods. From business standpoint of view, the receiving aspect is cash, the giving aspect is goods. Am I right? So, this is a transaction. In this transaction, you have two aspects. One is receiving aspect and the other one is giving aspect. You know one thing? This receiving aspect is known as debit aspect. Receiving aspect is known as debit aspect. Debit is a Latin word. So, receiving in English is known as debit aspect in Latin. That word has been derived from the Latin word. Giving aspect is known as credit aspect. In every transaction, you find two aspects. Receiving aspect, giving aspect. Receiving aspect is known as debit aspect. And giving aspect is known as credit aspect. Next point is on account. What is an account? Account is a classified statement which is in the form of English letter T. Account is a classified statement which is in the form of English letter T. Capital letter T. This account will have two sides, left hand side and right hand side. Left hand side will be called as debit side and your right hand side will be called as credit side. So account is a classified statement which is in the form of English letter T, 
which has two sides left hand side and right hand side this left hand side is known as debit side and right hand side is known as credit side this account will give you the final result of the transactions posted in this this account will give you the final result of the transactions posted here so what type of transactions we post how do we classify this account that we are going to learn now <clears throat> these accounts are classified into three categories these accounts are classified into three categories <clears throat> personal accounts real accounts nominal accounts these accounts are classified into three categories personal accounts real accounts and nominal accounts we need to learn about each concept here what is personal account accounts created in the name of person is known as personal accounts accounts created in the name of persons is known as personal accounts real accounts the accounts created in the name of goods and assets is known as real accounts accounts created in the name of goods and assets are known as real accounts what do you mean by nominal account accounts created in the name of expenses and losses income and gain or nominal accounts let me explain one by one personal account accounts created in the name of persons is known as personal accounts right these personal accounts are again three types personal accounts are again three types one <coughs> natural persons two artificial persons three representative persons personal accounts are three categories natural persons artificial persons and representative persons who is a natural person we are all natural persons <coughs> the person who has life the person who has life is a natural person krishna account ramu account sita account these are all natural persons because they have life so they are called natural persons artificial person who is artificial person artificial person is the person created by a natural person artificial person is a person created by a natural person for example you have state bank of india state bank of india is an artificial person it acts as a person it was created by a natural person so state bank of india is an artificial person who is representative person the person who acts on behalf of a natural person and artificial person is known as a representative person clear i will explain representative person with example then you can understand more <coughs> now what are those real accounts as i said real accounts are the accounts 
created in the name of goods and assets or real accounts. Who are those nominal accounts? Nominal accounts are the expenses and losses, income and gain. These are nominal accounts. This is how the account structure is being defined. I will explain representative person once I explain the golden rules and then by explaining the journal entry I can give you an example for representative person. Just give me two minutes. Clear now? Up to this? And each account has your golden rules. <clears throat> what is the golden rule here in personal account? Debit the receiver credit the giver receiving aspect is a debit aspect giving aspect is a credit aspect as we discussed in our transaction the same rule is applicable here debit the receiver credit the giver. This is the personal account principle. Real account. Debit. What comes in? Credit. What goes out? Comes in is a receiving aspect. Goes out is a giving aspect. So, you should not forget about the transaction aspects there. Receiving aspect is a debit. Debit what comes in is a receiving aspect. So, you are debiting. Credit what goes out. Goes out giving aspect. is a credit. So, golden rules are derived from, you know, derived from your transaction definition. Go to nominal account. Debit expenses and losses. Credit income and gains. Why expenditure and losses are debited? What I said about expenditure definition. Any amount paid by the business for what? For the services received. So, it, is, it has become an expenditure because you are receiving the services and making the payment. Since you are receiving the services and making the payment, it is a receiving aspect. Since you are receiving the services, you are making the payment. Hence, receiving aspect is a debit. Credit aspect. All incomes and gains should be credited. What definition I told you about income? Any amount received by the business for the services provided. Since business is providing services, giving. Since business is giving services, providing services, it is receiving the amount, right? So, income means income will be generated only when the business provides the services. So it is giving, giving aspect. So this is called a credit. If you see here in all the three definitions, you are not forgetting about two points there. One, receiving aspect and giving aspect. Receiving aspect is known as debit aspect. Giving aspect is known as credit aspect. Receiver, you are debiting. Giver, you are crediting. Debit, what comes in? Whatever you are receiving, you are debiting. Whatever you are giving, you are crediting. Here, 
you are debiting expenses and losses because you are receiving the services. You are crediting incomes and gains because you are providing the services, you are giving the services, hence you are crediting here. So, in all the three golden rules, the common factor is receiving aspect and giving aspect. Receiving aspect is known as debit aspect and giving aspect is known as credit aspect. It's very easy to remember your golden rules and principles now. Clear? <clears throat> Next point is on bookkeeping. What do you mean by bookkeeping? Recording of transactions into the books of accounts is known as bookkeeping. Let me repeat again. Recording of transactions into the books of accounts is known as bookkeeping. Why do I record? If I do not record the transactions into the books of accounts, it is difficult for me to remember. How many transactions I can remember on a daily basis? It is not possible. Hence, I need to record the transactions into the books of accounts. That recording process is known as bookkeeping. So, recording of transactions into the books of accounts into the books of accounts is known as bookkeeping clear this bookkeeping is of two types this booking bookkeeping is of two types single entry bookkeeping single entry system of bookkeeping and double entry system of bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is of <coughs> two types. Single entry system of bookkeeping and double entry system of bookkeeping. What do you mean by single entry system of bookkeeping? Recording either debit or credit aspects into the books of accounts is known as single entry. What do you say? Recording of either debit or credit aspects into the books of accounts is known as single entry system of bookkeeping. That means you will be recording either receiving aspect or you will be recording credit aspect. You know, at times we may record both aspects also into the books of accounts in single entry. So that is the reason single entry system is not most is not a popular you know system of bookkeeping. At times you record debit transaction, at times you record at times you record credit transaction. If required, you can record both the transactions. Hence. Single entry system is not a popular method. Let me repeat again. What do you mean by single entry system? Recording of either debit or credit transactions into the books of accounts is known as single entry system of bookkeeping. This is not a popular method of bookkeeping. Next one is double entry system of bookkeeping the name itself clearly says double entry you need to record both the aspects what do you mean by both the aspects debit and the credit both the aspects you need to record into the books of accounts that is called double entry system of bookkeeping this is very popular method because we need to record both the aspects into the books of accounts. This is called double entry system of bookkeeping. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Now, I am going to explain one or two journal entries to make you understand how these golden rules are applicable. Okay? Let us say this is business. Okay? Business purchased goods for cash. This is the transaction. How do I record it? Clear? I am again repeating the question. Business purchased goods for cash. Purchased goods for cash. Thousand dollars. How do I record this transaction? When business purchase goods for cash, what comes in? Goods. What goes up? Cash. Very simple. Receiving aspect, debit. Giving aspect, credit. This is one way of looking at the journal entry. Shall I repeat again? Here you are receiving goods, you are giving cash. This is one way of looking at the transaction. The other way of looking at goods comes under what account? Real account. Cash is an asset. Comes under what account? Real account. What is the principle under real account? Principal and the real account is debit what comes in, credit what goes out. You can prepare the journal entry in this fashion as well. Whichever is easy, you can follow that method. So here, the receiving aspect is goods. Comes under real account. Debit what comes in. You need to debit goods. Goods account to debit. For thousand dollars. What goes out? Cash. This giving aspect is cash. So you need to credit giving aspect to cash account. Thousand dollars. Other way of looking at cash comes in the way account. Principal, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Here cash is going out, hence you need to credit cash. That is how we can look at. So the entry will be goods account debit to cash account. But we will not debit goods. If you keep writing goods, 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 you will never come to know whether these goods are being purchased or sold or returned. It is difficult to understand. Hence, for instead of goods, what we do is we will debit purchases because we purchase the goods instead of debiting goods we debit purchases so the final entry will be purchases account debit and cash account credit this is the general entry clear Next entry is salaries speed $1,000 to employees. What entry we get? Let us take same example. Why are we paying salaries to employees? Because they are the people providing services. So, you are receiving services. And what are you doing? You are making payment to employees. That means cash is going out. You are receiving services 
and you are making payment, cash payment. Clear? Since you are receiving services, receiving aspect, so you have to debit services. Services account debit. Cash is going out. You are giving cash. Giving aspect is credit. So credit cash. Cash account. It's a simple entry. Since you are business is going to receive many services. If they keep debiting services, services, services for all the types of services they receive. It is difficult for them to understand which type of service I receive and against which service I pay this amount. Hence, they need to give a naming convention for this. What service is this? This service will be considered as salaries. Because the employees provided the services and making salary payment to them. So, we name it as salaries. So, entry will be Salaries account debit to cash account. This is the simple entry. You know, some people get a doubt here. See, business is paying cash. Yeah, there is no doubt business is receiving services. Absolutely right. But employees are receiving this cash. Business is paying cash and employees are receiving cash. Employees are the receivers. Why are we not debiting employees here? Receiving aspect. As per receiving aspect, employees to be debited, right? Why are we not debiting employees? <coughs> if you debit employees, what will happen? They will become debtors. Are they going to repay that amount to you? They will not repay. Why? Because they provided the services and they are receiving this cash. Hence, you should not debit employees. If you debit employees, they will become debtors. It looks as if they are going to repay that amount to you. They are not going to repay. So you should not debit employees. You have to debit services. Why? Because you are receiving services. Business is receiving services. Hence, you need to debit services account. That is salaries account. And cash is going out. Hence, you need to credit cash account. Clear? Same example I will tell you. Salaries payable. Previously I said salaries paid. Now I am talking about salaries payable. Not paid. Business is said to pay. How do I book this in? Salaries Payable to employees, not paid. But employees provided their services. Employees provided the services. But business is yet to make the payment. They did not make. What entry I need to do? Business is receiving services. Business received services. But nothing is going out. It did not make the payment. So nothing is going out. Where is the second aspect? Receiving aspect is there. Where is the giving aspect? Giving aspect should be cash. Business is supposed to make. But business did not. The next question should be Yes, business is receiving services. Nothing is going out from the business. You need to question, who is the one providing services here? 
Who is providing services? Employees are providing services. Employees are providing services. So, what entry we need to pay? You are receiving services. <coughs> you are receiving services. Hence, services account debit or salaries account debit. Clear? Cash is not going out. Nothing is going out. What is your next question? Who is giving these services to the business? The giver is employee. The giver is employee. So giving aspect employees. So giving aspect is credit. So to the employees account. Now why are we crediting employee here? Is it correct? It is absolutely correct. Why am I creating employees here? Because they will, they are supposed to receive this amount from the business. They are supposed to receive this amount from the business. They will become creditors to the business. They already provided the services, but they did not receive the amount. Hence, employees will become creditors. So you need to credit employees. Clear? Instead of crediting employees, you can also credit outstanding salaries. <coughs> Instead of crediting employees, you can also credit outstanding salaries. That is also correct. Here, outstanding salaries will be considered as representative person. You know why? This is representing on behalf of a person. Outstanding salaries account is representing on behalf of a personal account. Employees is a personal account. So this account is representing on behalf of a person. Hence, outstanding salaries will be considered as a representative person. I told you right, I will explain with example what is a representative person. Representative person is a person who acts on behalf of a natural person or an artificial person. Here outstanding salaries is acting on behalf of employees, natural persons. Hence outstanding salaries will be considered as representative person. So, that's all about a basic fundamental suffer counting. Thank you so much.